I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. An Orange County grand jury has concluded the Newburgh City Police Officers Eric Henderson and Nicholas Cardinal were justified in using deadly physical force when they shot Michael Lebhart to death March 7th. And as a result, no criminal charges will be filed against either of the police officers. As part of the filing of a no true bill of indictment, the grand jury determined the officers acted in self-defense, that uh, Lebhart had lunged at Officer Cardinal with a knife during the confrontation inside a Liberty Street Newburgh apartment, and that the officers' actions in using deadly physical force were justified. Each officer fired eight shots from their semi-automatic handguns, with 13 of the rounds hitting Lebhart. Police had been pursuing Lebhart, who was uh, wanted on several arrest warrants. The grand jury heard testimony from 24 witnesses. Following the release of the grand jury report, Orange County District Attorney Frank Phillips said he would not make comment on the contents of the grand jury report, but in a press release issued earlier today, he stated that he was satisfied that all of the evidence in the case was fully and fairly presented to the grand jury. Look for more, as well as Newburgh Community Reaction, here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. It was a case that shocked residents in the Ulster County town of Hurley. 35-year-old Sean Tyler had admitted to using a sledgehammer to beat his landlady to death back in December of 2011. Tyler uh, pleaded guilty to, to a first-degree murder charge in May. And today in Ulster County Court, Tyler received a prison sentence of from 25 years to life for the killing of 54-year-old Ann Gaffney in the basement of her home on Old Route 209. Investigators said Gaffney had been struck about 15 times with the sledgehammer. After the murder, Tyler stole her ATM card and $270 in cash, which he then used to buy crack cocaine. Gaffney had rented a room to Tyler and his girlfriend as a way to earn money. Village of Walden officials are pushing forward with a plan to adopt a sex offender residency law following word that a convicted sex offender is currently living across the street from Walden Elementary School. Mayor Brian Marr and village manager John Ravella say the proposal would prevent level two and level three sex offenders, those considered the highest risk of repeat offenses, from living within 500 feet of a school or a daycare center. Village leaders will press to make the legislation retroactive so that it applies to the level three offender who moved into the house on Orchard Street a month ago. The proposed law will be discussed during a board meeting tonight with a Walden public hearing scheduled for July 24th. A long-awaited cleanup is getting underway in Port Jervis, where Orange and Rockland Utilities is starting its $6 million project to remove about 5,400 cubic yards of coal tar contaminated soil from the site of a gas manufacturing plant that closed nearly 75 years ago at its property at 16 Pike Street. As part of the contamination removal, O&R contractors will demolish two adjacent buildings it now owns, including the former Gino's Restaurant. The soil will be excavated to a depth of 20 feet, and o &R officials will erect a tent-like structure to contain dust and vapors from the work site. Reporter James Nanny will have the full story on the project and the timetable in an upcoming edition of the Times-Herald Record. And the preliminary report is out, and it's the Kingston Hospital on the chopping block. The Health Alliance of the Hudson Valley will recommend to the State Health Department that Kingston Hospital close and that the city's other medical facility, Benedictine Hospital, remain open as a full-service, non-sectarian community hospital. The expected hospital closing uh, would mean an undetermined number of layoffs. The Health Alliance reportedly lost $10 million last year in its operation of both hospitals. If the State Health Department signs off, a process uh, that is expected to take at least a year, Health Alliance officials plan to sell the Kingston Hospital campus. Look for community reaction to the proposal in tomorrow's edition of the Times-Herald Record. More humidity will uh, creep back into the region by the end of the week. As for Wednesday, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds with the highs in the mid-80s. Thursday will be partly sunny with temperatures again getting up around 85 degrees. 
get a complete recap on all that's happening in tomorrow's Times Herald record and wherever news breaks, you will find it here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.